Hello and welcome to this video which is about these Telecaster pickups and how to build them. Uh, specifically this video is going to be with black string wrap around the bridge pickup. If you want an easier way I would recommend using tape instead of the string. Uh, other than that I'm going to go step by step so that hopefully a beginner who's never done anything like this before should be able to follow. So these are the parts I'm going to start with. Uh, I'm going to start with step one being to work out the polarity of the Alnica rod. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them in one long chain so that I know each end is going to be a north and a south and so that if I'm pointing for instance all of them up this way I know all the norths are going to be pointing that way if the top here is north. So that's the first job and then after I've done that I'm going to use just typical compass and work out which way is north. So that's pointing away, so I know that's the south side, so that's attracted to north. So this is north. So now that I know that, I can work out which way up I want to put them in the flatworks here. And it depends what you're going for. If you're going for a vintage accurate one, then you want both pickups to be the same polarity at the top. If you're going for RWRP, being reverse wound, reverse polarity, you want opposites at either end, so that in the middle position, when you have both pickups active, it's hum cancelling like a humbucker. I'm going for RWRP here, so I want the neck to be north up, and I want the bridge to be south up. So, knowing that this is north, I can take the bottom flat work of the neck here, and I'll look here, it's actually got my writing on there, but you'll probably have a plain one and you can see from the eyelets at the bottom here the brass ones, let's get this in focus here and you can see on one side they're larger than the other if it's larger that's the bottom so you want to be pushing them in from the top side this is how I'm going to push the Alnica rods into the flat work I've got a drill press here I've completely unloaded the truck and closed it completely so that I've got a flat base here and I'm going to be pushing against the base of, of it here so you can see here I've got two stacks of the Alnica rod six for six poles obviously I've got those both stacked north upwards so what I'm going to do for the neck is I'm literally going to put them in exactly the same way they're pointing upwards there and for the bridge I'm just going to spin them over so all I have to do here is grab these rods ensuring throughout this process I keep them the right way up and these are pre-magnetized if not you'd hold them against there and push them in and all you're going to do is you're going to try to center them and push them in And then you just repeat the process for the bridge. Uh, again, you can see with the eyelets, they're small on that side and bigger on that side. So you're pushing, always pushing in from the small eyelet side. And of course I want this swapped, so I'm going to turn them the other way around. So now that I can, I can just follow the same process for it. Now, at this point, provided you've got everything correct for RWRP, you should, yes, they should stick to each other. That's the tops, and of course the, the bottom should as well. So, as long as you've confirmed that you've got polarity the correct way up, and you definitely want to do that at this stage after you've hammered on the, the top flat works, then it becomes a lot more difficult. Because all you do at this stage is, is pull one of them out and push it back in. If you've already hammered on the top then you have to pull that out and you'll be ripping other ones out as they hold. It becomes a nightmare so definitely make sure you have your polarities the correct way up at this point and once you do then you can proceed on and hammer on the top flat work pieces. So now I've transferred these over and I'm just doing this on top of a vise and you need something hard underneath it 
saying metal like the top of a vice is perfect as long as it's dead flat and you've got the entire flat work there because you don't want to go hammering on the top here on saying soft because as you're hammering away you're going to hit these rods and they're going to sink all the way through the flat work and if what's beneath it is soft it will sink into it as well and you always want to keep this flat otherwise winding the next stage becomes very very difficult so it literally is a very very simple process of positioning the flat work on top and once you have you want to peer down the top and see if all the rods are dead straight and right in the center and that looks pretty good to me so I want to position the flat work as close as I possibly can to where I believe it to be the center and straight and once I've done that I want to hold it and just gently hammer it on and the flat work bends as you can see there so once you've got it hit on one side you just generally just want to work your way down and then as you do you can add more force you just work your way back and forth um, as I'm doing this, notice that I'm holding the flat work flat down there because if you hit it too hard and it bounces upwards, you can still push them out. So you just want to hold it firmly where it is. And then once you have that all good there, that looks good to me. And that's literally all there is to this stage. So you want to repeat that also for the bridge, following exactly the same process. And depending on how straight the rods are, the radius of them, and how big the holes in your flat work tops are, you may end up having to scrape a little bit of the material away from around it. And if it doesn't scrape away, usually that means it's not down far enough yet. This is a flat Sega Telecaster bridge, so I am aiming to get the top flat work to be completely flush with these Alnico rod tops here. And although this is pretty much dead on here, there is a way if you do accidentally hit something below it so that the Alnico rods are sticking out the top to actually correct that. And the easiest way I've found of doing that is to stick it in the vise and tighten the vise around it and then if you grab something like a screwdriver you put the screwdriver between the poles and you can push either way on it and what that will do is it, it's going to push the flat work out towards the end of the pole and as long as your vise is dead straight you should be able to get a completely flush finish even if you've completely screwed it up and that goes with both flat work top and flat work bottom here and if I show that to the camera there you can see it's quite blurry there but that is dead straight if you've done a good job before this that's a completely unnecessary step to take but if you do screw it up it's a good way to save it 
And then the last stage of preparing your flower work is to lacquer pot them. And what this is going to do is going to protect the rods. So when you wind the wire on top of them, if the insulation of the wire breaks down, then the layer, the layer of lacquer there should provide extra insulation there just so that it doesn't ground through the, the rods themselves here and then you get grounding issues and uh, also it just holds the whole thing together as it solidifies around the whole thing it should make the, the joints here a lot stronger which is good because when you wind, there, wind the pickup there's going to be a lot of force pushing that way and that way on the bobbins as the wire tries to push itself outwards so you want these connections to be as strong as possible so what you need to do is a very very simple process of get yourself a, a pot of lacquer like so and you don't need to leave them in there for long five ten seconds or so and that's all the lacquer done Just make sure the lacquer covers all of it for a, a few seconds. You don't want any dry patches or anything not properly cured with lacquer. And then after that, you've got two flat works completely covered in lacquer, and we we don't want this much because when it's drying it's going to run all over the place we're going to have bumps and it's going to be ugly and it's going to get in the way so you're going to take a bit of paper towel and you're just going to dab the worst of it off now the important parts are here and here these are the connections so when you're doing this you want to avoid them as much as you can but on top on the bottom around the winding area where you're going to take the coil end and start here you can get rid of most of it and of course if it does run and there's too much excess on there then again that's going to be something that that makes the bottom bumpy which makes winding it an absolute nightmare so at this point this is your last chance to make sure everything's smooth and I tell you once you get onto the winding stage if it's not completely smooth it's going to be horrible so you don't need to do too much as it's, it's quite viscous but as long as you don't have it looking absolutely drenched in lacquer then then that's usually enough And then the very last step is literally just to hang them up somewhere. And you don't want them sitting against a surface like this because when the bottom lacquer dries, they're going to stick on. So what I do is I string them with a bit of string through the poles in the middle there and hang them like that. Then you only have a couple of contact points where it lays against the string. So it's very, very easy to prise it up against, say, there or there. And there we have the two flat works hanging from the ceiling on a piece of string now. And I'm doing this in late November, so it's pretty cold here. So the drying time for that's probably going to be about a week. If you're doing this in the middle of a British summer or probably in the US at any time of year, you could probably get away with three, four days for a cure. But it, it is very important that you do leave it for as long as you possibly can because you really don't want the flat work to flare as you're winding it, otherwise it really ruins it, first it looks ugly. And if, if you're doing telecaster pickups like this with the top flat work being flashed with the pole, a any flare at the ends really, well I've had them so bad that the top flat work under the pressure has actually completely popped off before 
So getting it dry, getting enough lacquer on there for it to hold is important for the longevity of the pickup. So here we are about a week later and all the lacquer is completely dried and now these are ready to wind. So the first thing we need to do is because the lacquer tends to block the eyelets, we need to grab a pin and just prick that through each of the eyelets and wiggle it around a little bit just to open these up. Sometimes the lacquer doesn't do it but more often than not it does. And we just need to make sure that there's no lacquer here blocking it because we're going to put the wire through here, thread it through those and twist it around. So if they're blocked we can't get the wire through. And after we've done that, again we want to check the bottom and you might notice on, for instance here, a bit of the flat work is flaring up around and we just want to scrape off as much of that as possible until we've got a completely flat bottom. And sometimes this is easier done with a screwdriver. And now what we need to do is Although I said that the lacquer is supposed to block the, the the windings that go around here on the magnets from grounding on the magnets themselves, it can break down over time and it's not foolproof, so the best way is to grab some tape and to tape around them. And as you do this, just be careful on the both the top and the bottom that everything's covered up. Use enough tape that you can get around it a couple of times and that should be more than enough to cover any holes that you may have left. And that means now the winding is going to sit directly on the tape so they have an extra layer of protection. And now they're ready for winding. Now the first job for winding is to get the wire. So you want to take your small winding wire and depending on which way you're winding it, you want to get it in one of these two eyelets. So we start from this side, we poke it straight through. And what we do is we just loop it through here a few times. I find five times is usually plenty, you could probably get away with less than that. That should be enough just to hold it in place. Make sure you don't accidentally break any of it. And then once it's done, you can tear it off. And then that's ready to go. Then we do exactly the same again with the bridge. And now we wind the coils. And for Telecaster pickups, it's standard to do about 9,000 winds of 42 gauge on the bridge and about 8,000 of 43 gauge on the neck. And a helpful tip for when you're winding the bridge pickup is to make sure that the coil is slightly thicker around the bottom than the top. And that helps when you're trying to put the string around it.
And now we do exactly as we did with the coil starts. And that's just grab the wire, put it through the opposite eyelet. And then once it's there, we can break it off at probably about 10 centimeters worth. That's probably the easiest length to work with. And then if we kink the end of it, we can grab that and hook it in the eyelet. And once it's hooked in, we just push it through. And again, we loop this about five times. And once that's done, we can tear off the end, and the process is exactly the same for both neck and bridge. And now we want to prepare the cover. And the way we do this is we want to scratch the chrome plating off the middle tab here. So you can see the, the two ones around the back. This is the middle one where the ground wire will be connected to. And because the solder does not stick to this plating, we have to remove the plating to expose the metal underneath. And the way we do this is you can use sandpaper if you want, but I like to use a file. And doesn't take very long until you can see the metal underneath. And as soon as you can see that metal, then you've gone through it. And now what we want to do is we want to prepare the output wires. And the way in which we're going to do this is because if the wire's a bit too wide for the eyelet, which this wire is just about the right size, but playing it safe, what I like to do is pull back the wire and expose the amount of wire that I'm going to use, and I'll split the strands apart and probably about into probably about 50-50, and then I will cut half of them off. And that just means it will get through the eyelet a lot easier. Because if you go through the eyelet with too much and it snags the wire, you can break the coil wire in the pickup. And you certainly do not want to do that, especially if it's the coil start, at which point you have to rewind the pickup. And of course, for the black wires, which are going to be our grounds, as is standard, we want to expose quite a lot more because we need to go both through the eyelet and then we need to connect to either the base plate ground for the bridge or the cover ground for the neck. So we want to expose a few centimeters, probably about that much. And because we're threading this so much further through, this one is a lot more important than the hot wire. And then we do that for both sets. And these wires are pre-cut. I've cut it to 20 centimeters for the bridge and 30 centimeters for the neck. And that's both the hot and the ground wires. And now, once those are done, we can start putting on both the base plate and the neck cover. So what we're going to do for the base plate, we literally just slide it over, and then the neck cover goes through the, the hole here, making sure that you don't snag the coil with it as you go. And then they should fit in both the, the little cutouts here and here, and that one goes through the holder. And then what I'm going to do with the neck cover is I'm going to bend these tabs over, which is what holds the cover onto it. 
and what I do is I grab some pliers and just push them over. And then once you've done that, the cover's secure and can't be pulled off now. And that holds it in place for when you're putting all the, the wires and soldering them all on. And here's an important tip I've learned through making hundreds of these, is at this point with the base plate, what you want to do is grab your mounting screws and you want to screw those through the base plate while it's on the flat work and that means that ideally you should have it in more or less the perfect place or at least you have it in a place where they can get through because before I knew to do this I would solder it and then realize that the solder joints perhaps wouldn't go far enough so I'd have to completely unsolder it in order to get the mounting screws on so what this does is it holds it in a perfect place for it so now you can solder it and as long as these screws are through it it's in a good place and it's not going to cause any problems and now it's time to put the wires through the eyelets to get them in place and it depends on whether you're going for a vintage Acura or a RWRP which means they're noiseless in the middle position as to which way around these go if you're going RWRP for instance this will have white in the left one and then we'd have white in the right one on the bridge uh, and vice versa with black obviously if you were doing vintage accurate then you'd have both in the same so we'd have white in the left here and then white in the left on the bridge as well but I'm doing RWRP here so I will have them alternated between the two and then once you've got the wire through there which as we've cut it to thinner it should be quite easy all you have to do is tuck it kink it over to put it in its place now here is why we have done longer for this and you may find it flays slightly at the end if it does then just twist it until you've got it in one cylindrical piece and then we push it through here and if we've got enough, hopefully we should be able to bend it. Yep, bend it over and get it touching. We've lost that one. Touching where we've ground off the the plating on the cover. And then onto the bridge. We'll do the same again, but of course inversed, as this is going to be our WRP. And this time we're not connecting the black to a cover, but the base plate. And the way in which you do this is you bend it over and touch the base plate where you put it. It's completely down to your preference. Some people do it on the back here. I do it to the side over here. But again, put it through the eyelet, kink it over to hold it there and then the same on the other side and then once they're in position we can grab the soldering iron and solder them in position and now what we do is it's probably best to start on the ground and get a blob of solder on the cover for the, for the neck over here and then once that's done grab the black and get that connected here and once that's connected that anchors it there so that we can solder the eye without it moving around which makes it easier
and then we can do exactly the same with the bridge. Now we're heating up a large steel plate here, so it does take a little while to heat it up before the solder sticks to it. And now the final step, just to check that the coils are good, is to take the output both ends here, so both black and white, and test them with a multimeter. And if I get resistance, 7.6-ish was what I was expecting with this one, then I know the coil is good, as long as it's any continuity, as long as it's not zero, then you've got a ground issue, then you know it's working correctly. Do the same with the neck, and let's hold that on properly. 6.8, which is round about what I was expecting for that one as well. So that means both coils are good. Uh, if they're not, then there's a good chance the soldering on the eyelets could be wrong, so just try resoldering them. If not, then you have an issue with one of the connections. Uh, sometimes the coil breaks and it still sticks in the eyelet, so if the worst comes to the worst, then you have to rewind it, but check the eyelets, check the soldering. Uh, sometimes they can get physical damage around the outside, at which point then you have to remove the end coil and unwind a few a few winds out off the edge and hopefully you come to the brake at which point you can pick it up from the other side of the brake and then feed that through the end eyelet and if it's not too much then you still have a pick up that sounds pretty much the same as before. And now the next step is that we want to wrap the bridge with our string wrap to protect the coil. So the first thing we do for this is we grab the two output wires and we'll thread them through the hole here. And the trick to this is that once you get one of them through, you don't want to pull it the whole way through, otherwise when it's bent over it's a bit thicker so you may struggle to get the other one through. So you want to thread it through maybe halfway and hold it there and then you can thread the other one through. Of course being careful that you don't break any of the coil start or end while you're doing this. And yeah you can see there it's pretty tight there. So once you've looped them both through you can just pull them. And then you can repeat exactly the same process for the neck pickup as well. And then as we're winding the coil with string, we need to get the mounting screws out of the way so we can take those off now. And I reckon this is probably the most difficult part of the build. So we get our string, and with the end of our string, what we want to do is we want to pull the strands apart. We want to make it as thin as possible because we're going to tuck this under a couple of the first string winds. And we don't want there to be a big lump underneath. So once you've done that, Grab your pickup, and what we want to do is we want to put that vertically down here. Hold that with your finger, and then wind around the top. Oops. And once you've done the first wind, all you have to do is loop it over on top of the bit of string at the end here. And then you just work your way down. And if you followed the instruction beforehand of making the bottom of the pickup 
thicker, then it shouldn't be too difficult. If you haven't, and it's thinner, then the winds of, of the string are going to bunch up at the bottom, and you're going to have to prise them apart as you go, which makes the job much harder. And as you go, make sure you cover up the wire so you just push it across like so. And you don't want to overlap any of the wires here either. And then, once you got to the end, all you have to do is trim the string off towards the bottom. And then, if you could prise any of the string windings up and tuck that underneath. And then, push them back down, and hopefully that should anchor it there. And there it is. And here's where my design deviates from the normal type. Now, back in the 50s, Fender would get their black string wrap by putting white string in black wax. And a lot of pickups aren't potted in black wax, so in order to, to not have to have two different types of wax, what I do is I will paint this with black water-soluble paint. And then we just put it in normal wax, which is a much cleaner way of doing it as well. Then you don't get black wax all over the place. And after the first painting has dried, you will probably notice that it's not fully black and there's still a few white patches. So always have to paint it twice just to cover all of it up and to get it the right shade of black. Now, Leave that to dry for about 10 minutes and then it should be good for wax potting. And before we wax pot, we want to reinstall the screws. And what this is going to do is it's going to hold the base plate in position. And then hopefully the wax should then get between the base plate and the pickup itself. And then as it solidifies, it should hold it in the right position. Now, if you don't have the screws there, it may solidify it in the wrong position, which means you won't actually be able to get the screws on afterwards. And now we put the pickups in the wax, which I have preheated to approximately 55 Celsius. All you have to do is make sure they're submerged and then they will stay in there for approximately about 15 minutes to about half an hour. As a general rule of thumb, once the bubbles have stopped coming out, that means most of the air has come out, or at least as much as, as it's actually going to come out. And then you can take the pickups out of the wax once they're done. And what we want to do, we want to wipe off as much excess wax as we can. And of course this is a lot easier while it comes straight out the wax and it's liquid than when it's solidified and sticks to everything. Of course when you're doing this be careful of the coil start and end. 